As we begin chapter 2 in the story of Red Dead Redemption 2, we soon find ourselves in the town of Valentine. It is here that Arthur can first meet a farmer who's collecting donations for an orphanage in the more southern city of Saint Denis. Hey, mister. You get a lot of money doing this? Hello, sir. Not much, but it's the trying that counts. If you say so. Well, I do. And who do you help? I'll help you learn to keep your mouth closed. <coughs> Sorry, sir. <coughs> Welcome to the video. You're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and today we're taking a look into the tragic story of the Downs family. If you enjoy what you see today, you all know what to do, and please be aware there will be major spoilers ahead for those who have yet to complete the main story of the game. With that being said, let's continue with what we came here to see. Nothing on the table. The tale of the Downs family. After trying to enjoy a drink with friends at the Smithfield Saloon in Valentine, a few of the boys soon find themselves in a large brawl with the other patrons. A huge brute known as Tommy soon involves himself in the commotion, taking the fight to the street. After gaining the upper hand, Arthur is once again met by the charity collecting, Mr. Thomas Downs. Hey, come on, stop that! Stop! Stop! Please, please, I beg you, stop. Come, sir, you won the fight already, surely that's enough. What business is it of yours? No business, <clears throat> no business, sir, but please, I beg you. Sir, sir, you all right? At this current time, Arthur doesn't seem to be able to see past the ways of the Vandalins gang and feels the life of an outlaw is the only one that makes any sense. This appears to be the reason, during the first two encounters with Thomas Downs, he's instantly dismissive of the man's good-natured ways. The Vandalin gang needs funding for supplies, and one of their ways that they acquire this money is loan sharking. This operation is organised by the gang's accountant, Leopold Strauss. After sending Arthur out to several owings, upon his return, Mr. Strauss has one more for retrieval. How did you get on, Herr Morgan? Called in on the small holder, Robo. Didn't even speak English. <laughs> good, very good. My pleasure. Uh, well, if it's pleasure you're after, there is one other. This farmer preacher fellow I met in Valentine, Mr. Downs. The opinionated little do-gooder? Yeah, hey, I know the one. Arthur recognizes the debtor's name immediately and even seems to be excited to be collecting from the man. The Downs family ranch is out near Cumberland Falls. Come here, you maggot. Please, sir. I'm... I'll... Really? Threaten me, would you? Oh, please. I have a family, sir. Please. I don't care about your family. You owe me money. I'm working... <coughs> I'm working as hard as... <coughs> You borrowed money from my business partner, Herr Strauss. You owe him, you took the money. He wants it back, what's not to understand? <laughs> Where's our money? I don't have it. Sell your place. We already owe more than it's worth. <coughs> then sell your wife, or your family, or something. We ain't your idea of charity. Is that clear? <laughs> What are you looking at? Thomas! I said what you looking at, woman! My husband isn't well! If we could just have more... Like I said, we ain't nobody's idea of charity. Get us the money! This collection was unfortunately the beginning of the end for Arthur Morgan. The Downs family are in dire straits. They have very little and are barely surviving at all. I believe that Thomas taking the first swing at Arthur was a move of sheer desperation. He felt he had literally no other option. Upon returning, Arthur somewhat scolds Leopold as he feels that lending money to that particular family was a waste of time 
as he should have been aware that they would have struggled to pay it back. Ah, how did you get on? Not so good. He's almost dead. And they seem more or less destitute. You were a fool for lending them the money. Well, people who aren't desperate don't seem so interested in my propositions. Of course. Sometime later, in an easily missable interaction at Horseshoe Overlook, the wife of Thomas, Edith Downs, visits the gang to pay off some of the loan. Hello? My husband owed you money. Here it is. Thank you. And your husband, is he well? He's dead. Combination of beatings and sickness did for him. My deepest condolences, madam. So we learn that Thomas Downs has unfortunately passed. For those who missed this interaction, we later learn of his passing from Leopold Strauss, right before Arthur and a few others head back up north to hit the bank of Valentine. Mr. Morgan! Mr. Strauss? That man, the debtor, Thomas Downs, apparently he's dead. Dead? Huh, well, no, he didn't seem very well. His wife. I believe he has a wife and child. She will assume the debt, of course. Of course. Then you can head up there and collect. We lent them a lot of money. Okay. Gentlemen, let's go rob ourselves a bank. Strauss seems agitated that Thomas had passed and refuses to let go of the debt in this heartless statement. After the bank job, Arthur returns to the ranch to collect, where we witness both Edith and her son Archie are packing up their belongings. My husband's not cold in the ground and you've come back here, Archie. I nearly paid off what was owed. Your husband knew the rules when he took that money. Now, I'm real sorry about the way things turned out, but he had a choice. Ain't my fault about the way the world is. He didn't have a choice. He was good, and he did good. There wasn't no choice in that. And you've as good as killed him yourself, and don't kid yourself. You had a choice. You speak as if killing was something I cared about. You ever wonder about eternity? You should. I hope it's hot and terrible, Mrs. Downs. Otherwise, I'll feel I've been sold a false bill of goods. Now, please, give me that money. <sighs> Either you got a lazy eye or lack of respect. Which is it, boy? I ain't got no lazy eye. No respect for the lacks of you. <sighs> well, maybe when your mother's finished mourning your father. I'll keep her in black, on your behalf. You think on that, boy? Well, maybe you shall, sir. And maybe other events will transpire. You best stick to them books, because mark my words on this. Vengeance is an idiot's game. Ah, Mrs. Downs, thank you for your punctuality. It's next to godliness, isn't it? That's cleanliness. I'll have to take your word on that. Good day. In this scene, Arthur displays a lack of emotion towards the family. This again is showing that at this current time, he only knows the life of an uncompassionate gang member. Sometime later, as the gang move further south towards saint -Denis, Arthur encounters Mrs. Downs once more. This time, we learn that the family's situation has become even worse than it was before. Hey! You want some company, mister? No. You sure? Hey. What? I don't know you. This is Downs? Oh, no. Not you. Get away. Ha, now. I mean, uh, hey, help. Uh, help. Hold on. This man is bothering now. me. Someone help me. Officer, help. It seems that after losing their ranch, Edith was forced to begin working on the streets just to get by. A far different life than the one she had as a rancher's wife. Arthur has been coughing a lot recently and even passes out on his way to visit Sadie Adler. A kind stranger helps him to a doctor where we learn of the reason. What's wrong? I mean, what appear to be the symptoms? Well, I think you've heard them and I'm coughing. Uh, is there any blood? Sometimes. Uh -huh. Okay, now here, breathe. Again. Let me see your tongue. I say ah. Ah. What is it? It's 
Not good news. Well, I guess that. You got tuberculosis. I'm really sorry for you, son. It's a hell of a thing. What do you mean? You're real sick. You... It's a progressive disease. And you'll be... Now, the best thing is rest. and Getting somewhere warm and dry and taking it easy. Now, is that possible? Sure, I can just take my winters in my country club in California. No, it's not possible. Arthur contracted tuberculosis from Thomas Downs after the debtor accidentally coughed in his face. Arthur reflects on the choices he's made and the life he's led. As he walks from the doctors, the words of Mrs. Downs resound in his head. He didn't have a choice. He was good and he did good. Further into the story, knowing that the Pinkertons are hot on their tails, Arthur and Charles must head to a location called Beaver's Hollow to set up a new camp for the gang. After dealing with the inhabitants, he rescues a poor victim who was captured by the Murphy gang and safely returns her back home to Ansberg. It's here that Arthur meets Mrs. Downs once more. Mrs. Downs? Oh no. You leave me alone. You just leave me alone! Thanks, buddy. Edith has still been working the streets, and as we can tell by her facial features, this way of work has impacted her physically too. She's contracted some form of an infection, more than likely syphilis. Arthur is feeling guilty, believing that he's the one that caused all of this. Now knowing of his ways and wishing to change things for the better in the little time he has, he begins to help people and shows compassion for others. Leopold Strauss continues to loan out money to the desperate, and even though Arthur is trying to be a better person, he still aims to collect. The outlaw's way and his loyalty to the gang is still pushing through. In the first of these collections, Arthur must retrieve from one J. John Weathers, a deserter from Fort Wallace. After defending the man from the soldiers hunting him down, we learn that the debtor has a heavily pregnant partner. Secondly, Arthur is tasked with tracking down Mr. Londonderry, who also happens to be called Arthur too. He's employed at the Ansberg Mines. Upon the attempt at collecting, Arthur has the following interaction with the foreman. Arthur Londonderry, here? I'm sorry, feller, but you're too late. Arthur's dead. <laughs> the man's dead? What's wrong with you? Oh boy, you can't exactly beat it out of him now, can you? <laughs> you might get something off his widow just across from Butcher's Creek, but I'd hurry. You ain't gonna be the only one a-knocking. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, I ain't the godforsaken money lender. Heading to the widow is next. Arthur's dead. I know. I know. I'm sorry for it. It's just... We lent Arthur some money, you see, and... So it was you. You son of a bitch. What do you want now? You want my boy's shoes? You want the food out of our bellies, what little there is? You want me to lie down for you? No, no. I... Arthur gave everything to pay your bills. Everything. And now there's some fellas coming to take the house. There ain't nothing left, mister. Uh, I just wanted to say the debt's canceled and to uh, take this. It won't bring your husband back, I know. You need money and I don't. Why? Well, you're a good man. I just wish you'd done it before he worked himself into the grave. But you know, 
Maybe you and your friend that lent him the money could do things differently. Like, not threaten a man. Excuse me. I'm sorry, ma'am. I really am. It's during these two interactions that Arthur truly feels regret for the choices he has made in life, specifically the interaction with Mrs. Londonderry and her child. In an optional mission towards the end of Arthur's playthrough, we can take a ride with Rainsfall, the chief of a Native American Wapiti tribe. It's during this time that we learn a little of Arthur's history. You know, I had a son once, years ago. Don't talk about him much. No, what was his name? Isaac. His mother, Eliza, was a waitress I met. When she got pregnant, she, she knew who I was, what my life was. I didn't want to promise nothing I couldn't keep, but I said I'd do right by them. Every few months, I'd stop by there for a few days. He was such a good kid. She was too, I guess. <laughs> Just a kid, 19. What happened? I got there one day and saw two crosses outside and I knew right away. Turned out some bastards had come through. Robbed him and shot him dead. And offered ten dollars. Hardened me. Feeling that kind of pain. But I know now that you don't get to live a bad life and have good things happen to you. I think you're being hard on yourself. Maybe. All I can do now is try and make some things right. Seeing Mrs. Londonderry and her child brings back bad memories for Arthur. He sees the life he could have had if he had chosen not to stay with the gang all them years before. In a very heart-wrenching clip, some time later, Arthur speaks with Sister Calderon at a train station and opens up about how he feels in a self-reflection of his life, admitting he's afraid of dying. I had a son. He passed away. I had a girl who loved me. I threw that away. My mama died when I was a kid. And my daddy... Well, I watched him die. And it worked soon enough. My husband died a long time ago. Life is full of pain. But there is also love and beauty. Uh, what am I gonna do now? Be grateful that for the first time, you see your life clearly. Sure. Perhaps you could help somebody. Help him makes you really happy. <sighs> but I still don't believe in nothing. <laughs> Often neither do I. <laughs> but then I meet someone like you, and everything makes sense. <laughs> You're too smart for me, sister. <sighs> I guess I. I'm afraid. There is nothing to be afraid of, Mr. Morgan. Take a gamble that love exists and do a loving act. All aboard! With only a little time left in his life, Arthur feels that he needs to help Mrs. Downs and her son, Archie, maybe to give himself closure. He can find a widow in Ansberg. Just go away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I... Well... Well, you're sorry. Yeah, I heard you. But... I mean... Well, I... I this country... is man unleashed. That's the thing, and it ain't my fault any more than it is man anyone else. Man unleashed? Then unleash goodness. Not just hell's feeble brothers, sir. But how? I mean, all I know how to do is fight, I guess. I was set free to fight. Where's your son, Mrs. Down? Where you think. 
down the mine until he gets sick, which won't be long given how hard they work him. See, Foreman don't like him, so he gets the worst of it. Maybe I could go with well, Maybe you could just leave us all alone. Maybe. Maybe you could just go fight some other battle. Hey, boy! <laughs> hey, boy, your mom's a whore, little boy. Be quiet, Mr. Dockery. Oh, your mom's a whore, and that's a goddamn fact. Hey, anybody want to get lucky tonight? Go home here with Archie. <laughs> Be quiet, please! Oh, boy, come on. We're just teasing. There's nothing wrong with being a whore. Can she get me a discount? <laughs> I'm just joking. I wouldn't touch his mama with a 10-foot pole. She's repellent. Ooh, you gonna hit me now? Ooh, he's gonna hit me now. If you're gonna hit me, it's on, you little maggot. Why don't you shut up? Oh, hey. oh. Who's this, your daddy? My daddy died. And this man, he killed him. What are you doing here? Leave the boy alone. Why'd you kill his daddy? You after his mama? <laughs> Stop bullying the boy. Get out of my business, mister. Leave the boy alone. Or what? Or I'll kill you too. You couldn't kill no one. Look at you, all ragged and sick and weak. Clear off, you goddamn hermit. Clear off! You and the horse son here. Now who's next? Let the boy go. Let him go! Come on, me. Shame on you. He's just a goddamn boy! Let's get you out of here. They're gonna kill me. Now I got no job and they're gonna kill me. I've got some money. You and your mama can go someplace nice. Well, why are you doing this? I don't know. Listen, take this. All of it. Try and talk to your mama and get out of here. Now run. I'll try. <sighs> Good boy. I don't want to see you here again. Even though Arthur claims he doesn't know why he's helping the Downs family, I think he just doesn't want to admit that it's repentance. Although Archie was intending to use the money Arthur had given him to escape this life that they are currently living, he's still a child, and the decision is still with his mother. The family can be encountered one final time. This is Arthur's last opportunity to make things right. Mr. Morgan. You still here, kid? Oh, yes. Mama... Mama can't leave. Or won't leave. I I don't know, I said I had the money. It, she said your money weren't moral. She said it'd be better to die than to take it. <laughs> Maybe she's right, I don't know. I don't know anything about morals. She's still heading out, working, you know? I'm sorry, son. Sorry about all of this. Look, she ain't been back for a few hours. She left with some fella down the railway tracks. I did not like the look of him. Which way, you say? Uh, that way. Around the woods, towards uh, Willard's Rest. I'll see what I can do. Of course not. Well, dearie. Been to jail, but it weren't my fault. I'm sure. It's nice out here, huh? It's quiet. Nice? Sure. Feller could do what he likes out here. I guess. You think I'm a nice man, dearie? A kind man? Sure. I ain't always nice. Sometimes I can be real nasty. Oh, God. Oh. That's enough now, partner. Oh, You're starting to scare me, let alone the poor woman. Clear off. Who are you? Someone who don't want to hear no more of your nasty mouth. Push me. I'll put a bullet in you. I, I presume Archie sent you? I said clear off before I deal with you. I'll see you again, dearie. Oh. Listen. Listen to me. <coughs> Excuse me. You sound like my husband. I know. Listen. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what happened. I was uh, a fool. And I'm suffering for my foolishness. But don't go and get yourself killed because of your pride. You have a son, Mrs. Downs. I'm just so ashamed. Ashamed? <laughs> of what? <laughs> You loved him. You did everything for him. Let's get you home. All right. Let's go. I'm sorry you had to come to this. Stop saying sorry. Sorry won't bring Thomas back. I know. <laughs> So you're sick now, too? And you think that affords you the opportunity for penance for cutting his time short? No. I ain't looking for that. Okay, then. So just forget about me and the guilt you're carrying, because no good can come of that for either of us. And all you can do now is decide the man you want to be for the time you have left. Help someone who can still be helped. Why help yourself? I suppose you're right. Oh, hang yourself for all I care. You're right to dislike me. I ain't looking for that to change. Mama! Mama! Oh, oh. oh you're a silly boy. Oh, Archie, what oh, we do? Get out of here. Go. Live someplace else. Start over. Here. Take this. I don't need it no more. I don't want your money. Yeah, I know you don't want it. I don't. You sure as shit need it. Take it. No. I ain't looking for forgiveness. It ain't about that. Now don't forgive me. Just take the money and get out of here. Please. I know I ruined your life. I suffer for it every day. But don't let yourself get killed for, for pride. I've seen it kill too many folk. <sighs> don't say anything. Don't thank me. Just take the money and pack your bags. That's all I gotta say. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I said don't thank me. Get out of here. Please. During the credits roll, after completing the epilogue, we get our final glimpse at Edith Towns and her son, Archie, as they board a ship in Saint Denis. Edith is now looking more like the woman she used to be. In the paper, the New Hanover Gazette, issue 40, there's an article titled a gentleman's sport, which reads as follows. Even before Columbus sailed for America, golf was soaring in popularity in the United Kingdom, so much so that archery and other sports that could defend the realm were falling out of favour. Concerned over national security, in 1491, Scotland decreed the sport unlawful for a period of time. In the United States, this lovely pastime could not be more popular, especially in California, a state devoted to entertainment and leisure. Indeed, this publication received a sunny dispatch from the 31st state that New Hanover's very own Edith Downs has developed and opened a brand new golf course to much acclaim and fanfare. She and her son Archie have, of late, ventured into several businesses out west, which is a very distant lifestyle from her past as a rancher's wife. The life of the Downs family was filled with troubles, from their time on the ranch, scraping by with very little, and being forced to sell their property after the death of Thomas, to the days of the profession that Edith no doubt believed was her only option. The family had certainly been through turmoil. In the end, they survived, and even managed to become very successful with their businesses, now living the life that they deserved all along. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, you've been listening to Phil. If you did, you all know what to do. Do you want to get in touch? You can do so by following me over on Instagram, that's at philbygaming, or simply leave a comment below. I do have a Patreon page if you wish to support the channel, which you'll find linked below in the video description. 
any and all Patreons will be truly appreciated. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.